Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. Today, we have an exciting news for residents across rural Alberta. Earlier on in June, a significant announcement was made in Clearwater County, Alberta, that promises to reshape the digital landscape for many underserved areas of the province. In a joint effort to promote fairness and connectivity for every generation, the governments of Canada and Alberta have committed $153 million in federal and provincial funding to bring high-speed internet to more than 14,400 households in 120 rural and remote communities across the province. Now, this initiative announced by the Honourable Goody Hutchins, Minister of Rural Economic Development, and the Honourable Nate Glubish, Alberta's Minister of Technology and Innovation, includes extending this crucial service to over 800 Indigenous households. Elder Bernie, thank you for grounding us and getting us started in the right way today. Um, this is all good, and it's wonderful to bring us down to why we're all here. Um, I'd like to acknowledge, too, that we're gathered on the Treaty 6 territory, as well as the Mite homeland. And I want to give a warm welcome to my friend and colleague, Honorable Nate Lubish, Alberta's Minister of Technology and Innovation. Nate and I have done a few of these announcements, and we love bringing good news to Alberta, and I love bringing good news across Canada. Uh, I want to give a warm welcome to Honorable Jason Nixon. Jason, thank you for joining us today. The tall one in the crowd, as you can see. <laughs> um, and I want to give a warm welcome to many of the internet service providers, or as we call them in the, in the, in the lingo, the ISPs that are here today. I'd like to give a warm welcome to Chief Paulette from Smith's Landing First Nation, who traveled a long way to be with us today. And uh, to other mayors and councillors that are here. And I always have to give a, um, a warm welcome to the other members of the federal family here, the Parks Canada crew. I had a wonderful tour this morning. And uh, Darren and Melissa, uh, just if, if you haven't had a chance to explore this magical area, do. Uh, the stories that are here. Uh, some painful, but some incredible stories, and I actually got to make a real nail this morning. So, yeah, if I had to depend on that to make a house, it would be a long, it would be a small house, and it would take me a long time. But, you know, Rocky Mountain, as we all know, that was where the fur trade expanded, and expanded to the west. And it was home to explorers like David Thompson, who really helped map this area. So, back in those days, we had maps. You know, um, some of us in the room will tell our age, you know, we had maybe not the maps of our, of our forefathers, but we all had a paper map. But now, people don't use a paper map, right? Because internet is a necessity, and every, most information that we need is found online. Maybe not the information that you give us, you elderly. So we all know the importance of internet. It's just not for your, um, for learning, from doing, education from home for kids doing their homework. It's just not FaceTiming and watching Netflix, even though I'll be honest, I use it to FaceTime with my two little granddaughters now, me. I've seen them, I've got another little granddaughter since I've seen you last. Um, it helps us in times of emergencies, and God only knows, Alberta, you've had your share of emergencies, and fires and floods and drought. The one thing we don't talk enough about too is how it really helps with healthcare. I'm from Newfoundland and Labrador. I'm from a rock in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So I get what it's like. You know, your issues in central Alberta are a little different from mine, but it's still, I live in a remote area. And the key, the difference that that, that connectivity has made for us in the small communities, especially in the issue of healthcare, is stunning. We're hearing emergency departments saying that their visitations are down, it's less stress on their doctors, because people now have access to virtual healthcare. It's, it's incredible. So internet, internet levels the playing field. A reliable, affordable connection is the equalizer. So Canada has a goal to have 98% of Canada connected by 2026 and 100% by 2030. And we came up with the Universal Broadband Fund a few years ago. And what that enabled us to do was partner with different provinces to extend our $3.2 billion investment into more money to get more Canadians connected. So in Alberta, We've invested $488 million since 2015. But today, why are we here today? Because Minister Glubish and I are delighted to tell you that we're gonna have more than 14,000 homes connected, over 120 communities all across Alberta, 800 are indigenous households, and it's $153 million to build up high-speed connectivity within the province. Communities are gonna be connected by nine ISPs, nine internet service providers, 
of which many are here today, and included in that are three indigenous community internet service providers themselves. So some of the work will be as completed as early as this month, and most of it, and it all will be done by March of 2027. So in March of 2022, whenever Nate and I get together, we smile because we remember that day well. That was when we got together to announce that Canada and Alberta had signed a $780 million partnership. And we picked a beautiful remote location in a, in a, in a historic grain field, a grain, uh, uh, grain elevator, thank you. And I'm from Newfoundland, man, but it was cold there that day. It had to be <laughs> minus 35. But we smiled at each other and we delivered it. We delivered the message. Everybody was excited because that was the start of a partnership that we knew was going to connect more and more. And at that time, Alberta was only 75% connected. I think Nate will share his numbers, but according to my numbers, you're now just under 90% connected. And at the end of this year, you'll be over 97% connected. So hats off to you. You're doing great work. Now, this funding is part of a broader historic agreement forged on March 9th, 2022, where both governments pledged up to $780 million to ensure high-speed internet access for rural, remote, and Indigenous communities throughout Alberta. One of those communities that received the funding for high-speed internet was none other than Clearwater County. Now, we spoke with Reeve Michelle Swanson of Clearwater County about the announcement and what it means for her community. But also, we talk about how the announcement has already turned heads of businesses looking to invest in Alberta. Reeve Swanson, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. It's always a pleasure to sit down with you and chat about what's going on in Clearwater County. Uh, I want to talk about an announcement that start that happened on June 14th in Clearwater County, where the federal, provincial, and the county governments got together to announce the expansion of high-speed internet access in your community. What does this mean for Clearwater, Clearwater County residents to have now, or going to have now, access to high-speed internet throughout the county? Well, thanks for having me on and to speak about this because this has been a topic of discussion, just broadband internet in general for probably two decades. And past councils have discussed the, you know, whether to dip their toe into what I call a, you know, it's the private world, right? It's the oligopoly of communications, telecommunications. And as much as we banged on their doors, it seemed like it was never a business case for them to come into our area. So about uh, five, six years ago, uh, that council got together, said, okay, we're going to start uh, making a better case, or even if it's a municipal case, so that we can ha start having connect better connectivity throughout our area. And as you know, in the map behind me, it, we are a big county. And the further west you go, uh, people are counting on, the fact that they can have an emergency call and sometimes a fiber to a tower gives you that cell connectivity and everybody likes to post pictures of their holidays. And this is a big game changer for our county because it's a, gonna be economic development. Uh, you know, a lot of businesses rely on fiber connectivity and for, you know, for schooling, much of what uh, Minister Hutchings and Minister Gublish have talked about there's so many more benefits to having a fiber connection in this day and age. So let's just talk about the economic part part of the announcement, if you don't mind, for a second, because you're you're right. I, I've spoken to mayors Reeves across this country, and what I hear is if you don't have access to high speed internet. There's often a time where there could be businesses closing up shop or moving somewhere else or people just not starting up businesses because the the remote work that we got used to during uh, the sort of pandemic uh, is spilled over to our day to day lives now and more e-commerce sites are set up with this announcement. Do you see a new economic benefit that will attract new potential home-based businesses or even larger based businesses into Clearwater County? Oh, you know, we've we've got the the potential to have so much in our community. You know, we're, we're remote enough. We're, um, you know, how Minister Drishan talks about economic corridors. Well, we have an economic corridor that goes straight east of Red Deer that would help our ag service 
you know, ag services or, you know, our oil and gas, any of that. Um, I'm hoping that this will help diversify to um, bring anything on, you know, how Calgary is the tech hub right now. It's rival rivaling uh, Seattle. And so it's like, why, why can't we have some of that here? Why can't we, I, I look at Wheatland County and how they've developed, you know, had that same thing with Greenview uh, County. They've got some more manufacturing. Those all needed a fiber connection for those companies to even look in their area. So that's, you know, let's, let's hope that we can uh, now that say that we've got this, you know, infusion of, partnership and I'm hoping that with the the phone start ringing here actually I, I did I had one call from Manitoba and so that was very nice to to say that they're going to probably look at our you know give it a year to for us to get some construction done and they're going to come check things out which is great well and then that's where I wanted to talk about because this this announcement is just an announcement until work actually gets start start getting done. Is there a timeline that Clearwater County is putting to place because you not only are sort of working alongside the federal and provincial governments, the municipality is actually undertaking their own fiber optics internet as well. So is there a timeline that you hope to have I don't want to say 100% because you're never going to ever, no one is ever going to be 100% connected, but is there a timeline that you as Reeve or Clearwater County in general have put in place, etched on the board a little bit to say, this is our timeline to get this up and running to ensure that people can start connecting tomorrow? For sure. Um, well, as as you mentioned, we have our own municipal, we started down our own municipal project, a broadband project. We had a six phase core backbone project, uh, which we've completed three out of six. And now that this overlay, I call it the universal broadband uh, grants, we got five, can now overlay on those three. And because the fiber's already in the ground, those that's the easiest to get started and get those homes connected right away. And so we'll start with those three and then hopefully congruently we can keep on going with the others. So I'm I'm hopeful that um, as we get receive the grants, we're gonna get some more information here on July the 2nd. Uh, that's when our next broadband committee meeting is going to be uh, gathered. And we are gonna get more into the details as far as expectations, what our administration can coordinate and understanding that this is a municipally run. This is an open access. This isn't uh, a Talis or Rogers that is that is running this program. So we run things maybe a little bit slower, but um, it's going to definitely uh, create a, a lot of um, interest, I'll just say, because as the realtors all around here tell us, that's the first, usually the first or second question when people move here is, how's your connectivity? So so do you get a sense from, okay, we'll take from the business perspective out of it for a second, but from a resident standpoint that they're excited because high-speed internet seems to be something that more people in urban settings just take for granted because you just turn on your computers and the internet's there. But in rural communities, which I lived in one for some time, you, you get a sense that you, you, you pray for the good days and you pray for the good weather because when the clouds, if you're hooked up to a satellite, that means you're going to be at the whim of whatever the weather is that day. Do you get a sense from your residents of Clearwater County that they're excited that fiber optics is finally coming to their community, even though it might be a year or two years time before they actually get it well uh, as you know it's been a few days since the announcement and it's been a bit of a mixed bag and uh not gonna lie i i have starlink i didn't wait uh you know for this fiber optics and i have a husband that worked remote work so he needed to have that good connectivity and at the time the telus hub or you know remember the dial-up <laughs> back in the day is not going to cut it. So I exactly like you said, these these uh, technologies are you know depending on the weather. It's a clear day, cloudy day, a snow snowstorm like we had on the weekend. Um, you know can absolutely ch change your connectivity. Um, do I believe that every resident needs fiber? Uh, no, it depends on your use. There's going to be people that just want to have it for email. Is there people that would like it to have it for their, like I say, they're, they got kids in school. If we go back to those COVID times, they had three kids in school and they all had to take turns on the internet to do their school and they couldn't all do it at the same time. 
So we understand that there's issues. Um, you know, our farmers like to get on those online auctions. Um, you know, latency can miss the bid and that can cause a lot of frustration as well. Or maybe you have a purebred herd that you wouldn't mind having, you know, some, selling some heifers to somebody in across Canada or in another down in the States. Um, yes, it's going to take uh, a little bit of learnings. And as we get through these grants and get through information, that is it, everything will be, there'll be more uh, public awareness campaign that's coming out. There'll be more uh, opportunities for our residents to say, yeah, we, we want it or we, you know, we're not ready for it right now. It's, it's not a one and done. I'll just say our residents still have a lot of uh, opportunity to uh, have, have their feedback and their input. So I want to just, sort of ask one last question before I let you go here. And it's uh, about the the uh, announcement. So you had Rural Economic Development Minister G G uh, uh, Hutchings uh, at the announcement. Mm -hmm. You had Minister Glubish at the announcement. Uh, I'm assuming, I'm, I'm going to assume, and I know you should never, but I'm going to assume for a second, but you as Reeve had the opportunity to speak with the ministers. Uh, was there anything that you were able to speak with the ministers that you were, you were happy that you were able to talk to someone from the federal government or even the provincial government about what's going on, not just from the high speed perspective, but around anything? Yes, uh, to be honest, it's anytime uh, you get in front of a minister, you're going to talk about whatever you can in, a, in that. And because of their portfolios, I know uh, Minister Gubla showed me time we, you know, go back to an army convention and we have those bullpit sessions. You know, you're always on the side and saying, how soon is that provincial broadband strategy coming out and different things like that. And I've, I know for myself, it's probably been about eight years for me working on this um, personally, and I was as a community member and then as sitting on council. Uh, it is so nice to talk to to them and freely. And, and, and it's not just, you're not just talking about your project. You're actually saying on how much better this is going to impact our whole country, our province. And there are some... Um, Technology is, is moving exponentially nowadays. What used to take five and 10 years, things are changing in eight to 10 months. And sometimes that's get scary. Um, but at the same token, this technology, every technology needs a fiber base. So that's that's a nice, they're not, they're not not putting more fiber in the, across the oceans, you know, in the ground. They're putting more fiber. And so to me, this is for generations to come. It's a, you know, a significant long-term investment and who knows what the technology is going to play. The internet of things, right? They say what is an average of 15 to 20 things in your home runs on fiber, runs on connectivity. What's it gonna be like in the next two to three years? Um, I, I, so you talk about the RMA convention. I so I know I said that was going to be my last question, but it brings up a good point. Um, so now that this is done, and I say done in the sense that you have now have funding to move forward on this project, um, at that RMA convention where we talked about that broadband rural connectivity program, there was another topic that was brought up around cell phone cards around coverage of cell phone usage because I've driven through Clearwater County and there's some dead spots in that county which for those who rely on cell phone coverage for life and death situations that is a dire need is that where the county is going to turn their focus now that this project is kind of up and running but up and running in the sense that it has now got a, a shot of adrenaline in it and as I mentioned before, uh, we have an open access network, which means that should uh, Rogers tell us or want to have a fiber connector tower to enable their cell phones to run on our fiber infrastructure, that's fantastic. That that would be great. Um, you know, they have their own fiber running in the ditches too. So I mean, they can always hook their they could they have could have the opportunity, I'll say, to put their fiber to better tower systems. Um, I think that's what people will just start demanding. I mean, as they get more and more used to this, nobody is not packing around a cell phone these days. And I agree, it's there are dead spots. And as you know, like I said, my my backcountry is 
is one of the few areas in Alberta that we get more and more people coming out to and they will it, it needs to be community driven. It, it, it's better coming from a community standpoint than it is coming from, I'll just say from a council or administrative level, but not like so different than, a, you know, the fire truck, the police response, you know, everything that needs to happen. So, but yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, always a pleasure. Uh, Reeve, I want to thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to sit down with you and chat about what's going on uh, before I let you go. Is there anything else we should mention about this announcement that you want to make sure people know about and what it means for Clearwater County? Absolutely. Um, like I've mentioned before, we have an open access. That means any ISP can come into our county and offer services to our residents once the fiber is all laid out to, to the homes and to the businesses. Um, industry is going to need more of i'm hoping to develop you know more industry wants to come and develop and we uh we increase the tax base and we can also uh create um, a space where innovation can happen and um, i'm really excited about this and i appreciate the opportunity to share the good news Thanks so much for tuning in for another great episode of Municipal Affairs with Chris Brown. I just want to remind you, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening to this or watching this on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button now. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in amplifying the depth and the breadth of our programming, like you saw today. There are so many great municipal stories out there, and we are so excited and eager to tell more of them later on this year. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.